Well, he will have to convince his Eurozone uh, partners that the budget that the Italian government is working on will generate enough growth uh, to allow Italy to grow out of its debt. But of course, there are lots of doubts about that. Uh, he has to deal with two political parties that have very different goals and very different objectives. One of the parties wants to cut taxes, while the other wants to increase spending. And you can mm. see that there is a problem there. And Prime Minister Tria, sorry, Economy Minister Tria is in a difficult situation because he's kind of a technocrat and he has to deal with politicians with very different goals and very different agendas. Adriano, how high are the risks from where you see it that Mr. Tria would still resign? The thing is, markets are worried that uh, the new budget changes the direction of the Italian deficit, even if Italy is still within the EU's threshold of a deficit of 3% of GDP, there has been a change of direction. Let's keep in mind that uh, Italy had promised to have a deficit of 0.8% next year, and now they are saying it would be 2.4%. And Tria is fighting to keep the deficit as low as he can. But at the end of the day, uh, the final decision is not in his hands, but in the hands of the two parties that are in power. So even if he manages to stay in power, he is not the ultimate decision maker. And even if he is replaced, his uh, successor would still be under pressure from the two parties that are actually in power. Adriana, what's worrying you the most here? Is it going to be what's happening in Italy over the next several days, particularly with those meetings today uh, in Luxembourg? Or are you watching as well this civil war within the Conservative Party in the UK? It's a combination of elements. The, the European Union is facing several sources of political and economic risk in the coming months. One, of course, is the Italian situation. We have seen that markets are worried, that Italy's bond yields have gone up, that the spread between Italian bonds and the German bonds has increased. So there is one factor there. But of course, uh, decision makers in the EU and the UK are also running out of time to reach a Brexit deal. Their first goal was a summit in October. That's probably not going to happen now. There could be an emergency summit in November, followed by another European Council in December. So yes, uh, the, the UK and the EU are running out of time. I still think there is room at least for a withdrawal agreement, which is half of the problem. And there may not be room for a document uh, establishing the future relationship. But I think it's uh, a very important goal for the EU and the UK to at least activate the transition period, that 21 month period uh, between Brexit and December 2021, during which time the UK will remain in the, in the single market, because that would buy them some extra time to keep negotiating their future trade relationship. Hey everybody, it's Hadley Gamble from our new CNBC Middle East Bureau in Abu Dhabi. Thanks for stopping by. Now to watch more, you can try one of the videos that just popped up on your screen. And don't forget to subscribe.